Hi, I'm Hannah Wallace and welcome to Finextra TV at Cybos. Calling into our virtual studio now is Anand Renganajan, Global Head of Sales and Head of Asia Pacific Security Services, Corporate Bank at Deutsche Bank. So Anand, welcome. Thank you very much for calling in today. Thanks, Hannah, and look forward to our chat. It's really good to have you on. So yes, I want to start by looking at some of the post trade trends you've seen develop globally during your role as Global Head of Sales and Head of Asia Pacific for Security Services. So tell us, what do you think will be addressed at this year's Cybos and what security trends have you seen grow that are um, specific to the business landscape in Asia? Let's start there. Thanks, Hannah. Uh, in fact, um, a lot of the focus in Cybos this year will be around what the world has seen transcend post the pandemic. Contrary to what one would have thought, that things would have gotten a little slower, I think things are accelerating. And, and that is, I think, the core of what I would like to say, acceleration or, or faster uh, turnaround times. Uh, across a couple of thematics. So one trend which I think is very ominous to everyone is the shorter settlement cycles. World over, there is a trend to move towards shorter settlement cycles. And I think India and US are two countries where currently, as we speak, there's a lot of talk about moving from uh, the current to a T plus one settlement cycle. But if you see, they're trying to you know, curtail and move towards a faster settlement cycle. But similarly, if you look at transformation in the digital space where uh, people would have thought, OK, it's going to take three, four years and the pandemic will probably maybe delay. It's actually, on the contrary, accelerated. So there's a lot of acceleration of efforts in that space. And I think that is going to be a big thematic uh, which will be spoken about um, in Cebos. But I'll come to that a little later, I think. Mm -hmm. But the other big, big uh, change that is happening is uh, the rise of fintechs in our ecosystem, the ecosystem that is very pertinent to the capital markets. And I think a distinct change there that we can see, and it's evident with the kind of uh, uh, partnership that we have seen various players announce, is Conventional players like us looking at fintechs not as competitors, but as you know, collaborative um, uh, um, to the efforts that we are building in this space. And that's why you'll see a lot of partnerships going forward and all this stuff. So I think fintech and the rise of fintech within the capital markets is something that we are seeing happening at an unprecedented space, working together with conventional players like ourselves. Uh, and that is a very good trend and a healthy trend for the industry. Mm -hmm. uh, in, 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 in last, on the, on the trends that you're seeing, I just want to delve a little deeper on the earlier point that I mentioned, which is digital transformation. Because one does talk about crypto and other things, but there are lots of things. I mean, real-time information is now more easily available than ever. Uh, artificial intelligence has penetrated almost every part of post-trade services. Uh, um, um, we are already talking about chatbots, which we were not talking about a few years ago. Everybody now has a chatbot to provide asset services. So I, I don't want to go deep into each one of them, but just, these are examples to showcase that in a lot of these areas where one would have thought it's going to take a couple of years to evolve, it has already evolved. Everybody has something tangible to show. It is no longer something that is you know, in the form of a white paper and a whiteboard conversation. It is realistic, meaningful conversations that are happening in the digital transformation phase. These things are essentially, I think, the focus of Cybos, and that is evident from the various sessions that you can see in the Cybos website. And, and I think this is very, very uh, timely to have these detailed conversations, and we are looking forward to these conversations. It is indeed, and the important word there, I think, is acceleration, I think. Um, and now I also want to touch on digital assets Custody, what does digital asset custody mean then uh, for security services perspectives? Because I know you wanted to talk about that, Anand. Yeah, so uh, I think uh, it's often a, a word that is sometimes used to denote various aspects of what one believes is digital asset custody, and therefore I think it's important uh, to break it down. Uh, so I will look at it into three components um, largely. The first one is cryptocurrencies and assets thereof, where cryptocurrency is the uh, main uh, driver behind these assets, right? Um, and, and this is probably not something that is evolving. It is already there. 
And if you see, there are lots of players who offer uh, these kind of services, and there are uh, players who can support uh, asset services around these cryptocurrencies, which is essentially tokenization and some small allied services. Mm. Well, this is already there. It's already kind of evolved. Although it may not be regulatorily supported as much as they would like it to, but you know, thanks to some interest, client interest in uh, cryptocurrencies, this is already there. The second aspect is the true conventional digital assets, but those are existing assets in either equities, bonds, which will be uh, developed in digital form. So there, we have seen pockets of uh, areas where people have worked on. Uh, on proof of concept or a sandbox approach. Uh, we ourselves announced uh, Project Benja, which is now very well known to people, about how we developed a, what we called a bond in a box, but is essentially a digital issuance of a bond and the downstream value chain right up to custody and asset services and how this works. And we have a few players who already launched uh, this. Now, this is the place where regulators are giving a lot of focus and importance on because this is the space there we want to see a lot of uh, evolution happen uh, over the next few years. Mm -hmm. now, this is where a lot of us are putting our efforts on. Although to start with, people may start with the basic tokenization, which is probably linked to the, the crypto uh, currency assets that I spoke about. But this is an evolving space, which is where we're seeing an interesting trend and all of us working towards it. Mm -hmm. The last bit is something that will help both, which I think also is accelerating much faster than, than we imagined, which is on the central bank digital currency, commonly now referred to as CBDCs. Now, while that is probably something which will help both these spaces, but that I think has the potential and the fact that it is driven by central banks around the world, it has the potential to not only help for the very reason that it's evolving, but it is also having the potential to accelerate efforts in the digital asset custody space that we spoke about. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that, along with the CBDCs, will, will play a big role in transitioning to, to where we want to be much faster than we are at this point in time. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm really looking forward to having more discussions around CBDCs, um, the opportunities and also the challenges there. Um, and, and you've covered a lot of really big topics. And another area sparking a lot of discussion will be the link between ESG factors and security. So tell us, uh, what do ESG factors mean in the realm of security services? Yeah, I, I think one of the reasons um, um, why we are seeing a lot of thrust, especially in a region like Asia, uh, by asset managers is, is around ESG um, and the allied services thereof. Because ESG was quite popular in Europe a couple of years ago because they started this, they led it. But you know, as, as, as it is evolving into multiple geographies, there is a lot of interest about ESG. There is not a single client conversation we are having these days where ESG is not being mentioned. The investment managers are looking forward to doing more of it. There are organizations, including banks like ourselves, who have you know, publicly stated our agenda for uh, what we want to do in the ESG space, both in terms of financing and, and thereof. So even companies want to endorse and, you know, and there's a lot of clamor to be called an ESG compliant company. So investment managers, therefore, when they are looking forward to launching ESG funds, there are two things where we are playing an active role. One, there is a regulatory linked development that is happening in terms of how do we you know, construct regulations around ESG for investment managers. Now, banks like ourselves play an active role in market advocacy, working with clients and regulators and trying to balance um, the requirements and enabling something which is meaningful. So we are playing an active role, trying to play an active role, trying to see how we can facilitate that. Also for investment managers, there is definitely a role that they need to play in terms of monitoring their investments, tracking their investments, how the investment they made in ESG companies are doing against the metrics that they set forward. Uh, and the very reason why they were called ESG companies, all of this means the investment managers has a ma have a massive role in playing beyond just in making the investment decision. So where we come in like a true blue post-trade services specialist is once they made the investment decision to make an investment in an ESG company because they are you know, managing an ESG fund or so on and so forth, how do we help them with post-trade services in the investments they made on behalf of this ESG fund of theirs. 
and there there is uh, entire gamut of you know work that we are trying to do uh, again leveraging some of the new phone technology that we have and i think we have not yet announced so i don't want to share the details of some of these things but i think clearly we are working on something which i think is quite innovative and something that will be hugely of you know value to the investment managers post the investment decision that they made on esg and and that is as much important as making the decision on investing in esg companies as well mm -hmm. uh, and i think this is an evolving space more to come on this so hopefully the next time we speak we'll have something more interesting to share in this space um, on esg well, and, and as I said, we've covered some really big topics today and yes, looking forward to catching up further down the line, reflecting um, on what we've covered today. But thank you very much for calling in and sharing insights. You've got us really excited about those big topics that will be covered this year at Cybos. So thank you very much. Thanks, uh, Hannah. My pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much.